Well, we're joined now from Glasgow by the First Minister of Scotland, Alex Salmond. Alex Salmond, your, your manifesto it promises a referendum on independence. Is there any reason to believe that any more than the last time you promised it? Within the five-year term, we'll put forward uh, the proposal for a referendum. I, That's I what think you said we'll last have, time. Yeah, but we couldn't get it through, Jeremy. I think we Off. lost three parliamentary votes in it in the last four years. I think the advantage we'd have, we're going to have more seats, and uh, uh, but also we'd have a, a democratic and moral authority. If we'd elected a second time on mm. this uh, with this mandate, then I think even the, the most uh, vigorous of our unionist opponents might find it difficult to gainsay the right of the, the Scottish people to have a decision on our own constitutional future. Uh, now, you're going to spend an extra billion pounds on the NHS. You're not going to charge people, uh, students, fees to go to university. You're not going to have prescription charges and the rest of it. I mean, I don't know whether you know what the weather's like down here, but are you in some sort of microclimate up there or what? Well, we run government a lot better than you do down what? there, Jeremy. We've had to uh, balance the books, for example, over the, the last four years in Scotland. Uh, over the last four years, the Westminster government was singularly unable to, to, to balance the books. So if we've done it for the last four years, we can do it for the next five years. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. But we've demonstrated we can do it and we'll continue to do it. Isn't, isn't the truth of the matter that you can afford to make these pledges because they're exactly as much worthwhile as your pledge, for example, to cut class sizes to 18 pupils per class, which you never achieved. Well, we made very substantial progress on that, Jeremy. I mean, class sizes are an all-time low in Scotland, but I mean, yeah. let's think of some of the things we did achieve, like freezing the council tax, putting an extra thousand police on the, the streets of Scotland, a 32-year loan, recorded crime in Scotland, a small business bonus, ending prescription charges. You'll have to decide whether you think the Scottish Government is doing too much good for the people of Scotland, which you resent, or alternatively, you want to dwell on the things we didn't manage to achieve. I think the general balance of opinion, as you can see in the opinion polls at the present moment is that the Scottish government, the SNP government over the, the last four years did not a bad job, which is why we are in a, such a good position to get a refreshed mandate for the next five. And if you do such a thing, uh, will you promise that you will implement everything you've got in your manifesto? Make a promise now. Well, this last four years, we managed to implement 84 out of 94 key manifesto no, pledges. I'm not talking That's, about the last one. I'm well, talking about the current one, the well, one coming up. There was a, a logical train to my contribution, Jeremy, which was that... Really? Uh, well, well, yeah, well, well, listen to the argument. Then you can uh, patronise it afterwards. <laughs> uh, what I was going to suggest was that some of the things we were trying to do, uh, we couldn't get a majority in Parliament for. I mean, for example, we put forward a proposal for a minimum pricing uh, on alcohol to tackle head-on Scotland's problem with the so booze. We couldn't command a majority because all of the other parties opposed us. Now, we, we hope in measures such as that, Jeremy, we'll put them forward again, we'll put forward the legislation that with a refresh mandate, we'll get that vital social measure through for the people of Scotland. Uh, and just you know, while you're there, on a topical matter, I know you don't uh, have um, as much as you control as you would like over uh, foreign affairs. Uh, what's your position on the decision to send uh, soldiers to Libya today? Well, we, we supported the United Nations resolution. And as long as the action by the allied forces uh, in Libya stays within the confines of the mm. United Nations resolution, then we'll continue to, to support the action as being the, the best prospect of... Uh, assisting so, humanitarian efforts uh, in Libya and saving the, the lives of civilians. So, so we'll continue to follow the precepts of the United Nations, which, of course, uh, unlike many other parties, is what we've always done in terms of international engagement. Generally. So to be clear about this, you do not consider this to be so-called mission creep. You think it's within the terms of the United Nations resolution? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think you'll find that uh, Angus Robertson, uh, a leader in Westminster, was the first person to ask the Prime Minister directly about the dangers of mission creep. But in, in, insofar as this stands, uh, you know, a dozen or so observers, it does not, in my opinion, move outside the Thank confines you. of that resolution. And just one other question. Um, Gordon Brown's candidacy for the uh, IMF. Do you support him? <laughs> I've not even thought about it. Uh, I, I, wish, I wish him well for whatever life he chooses outside politics. He has my, uh, my best wishes, but I'm not certain that, that my personal endorsement would carry him far in the IMF board selection committee, Jeremy. Well, it doesn't mean it's not worth having. You're a very modest man. Well, he hasn't asked for it yet, uh, uh, Jeremy, but perhaps the, the phone call awaits after God right. sees this interview. <laughs> OK, thanks a lot. Great pleasure.